Welcome to Sunday's edition report with Vegas and Jim. Today is September the 2nd, 2019. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. And Miss Vegas, Sunday's edition. Yeah, this is Sunday's edition on a Monday. So we're trying to get you guys ready for tomorrow. And before I get started with the list, uh, you know, as you guys know, uh, our POTUS went ahead with the new China tariffs on $110 billion worth of imports, including obviously Apple products for the first time. And Beijing has retaliated, further escalating the China trade war. And, um, you know, we'll, I guess, have to see how, the, you know, the market responds. And I guess we'll know more of that really, um, I guess, tomorrow. And, uh, you know, some of the consumer goods for the first time include Apple, a watch and the Apple AirPods, along with also a lot of other electronic and footwear and apparel. And so we'll see what the market wants to, you know, show us tomorrow. So on that note, let's talk about this list. Uh, we're going to talk about HEBT, Boeing, Luna, UTI, XPEL, and of course, I'm going to, we're going to talk about Apple as well, uh, since everyone's going to be watching that one. So let's get started with HEBT. Sounds like a breakfast, uh, but this is uh, Hebt. This is Hebron Technology uh, Company, and they're in China, and uh, they're into the industrial goods. They're in diversified machinery, and uh, you can check out their website if you want. But the reason I liked this stock actually in particular is the fact that this stock has made new 52 week highs and also um, the Bollinger Bands were starting to have some strength. So whenever I see the Bollinger Bands having some strength and new 52 week highs, you can look to potentially anticipate a continuation into the stock. Um, so, you know, I would say keep this one on your watch and maybe Jim can give us some supports and resistance on um h e b t and they have a really interesting uh website um you know they it's you're gonna have to translate it um but they provide uh electromechanical installation and piping and engineering designs for a lot of uh, pharmaceutical food and beverage companies and they also i told you guys before they do provide and sell those sanitary valves and pumps and um, they do a lot of automation products. So this is one definitely to still keep watching. We did talk about this not too long ago. So Jim, let's hear about uh, HEBT's charts. All right, well, I'm sitting here looking at it and I seen a real nice support right there at the 299 area where she's pulled back a few times and found resistance a few times on the daily one hour or on the daily year, on the daily chart yearly. So let's pull up the 20 day now and give it up. She's right, this thing's had a nice run from 50 cents down here all the way up to 329 and had a little resistance. I'm gonna draw a little resistance line right here at 318. Now that I saw that. And we'll go ahead and pull this up to the 20 day. Right now I see that support level that I would mention earlier, the 299. We can bring it down a little bit more to this 290. 3294 area create a little support channel and then we got our first support was this previous high that we had here at 312 so that's also another support and I see one right in here so this is probably the way I'm going to look at it low low support at 285 I don't want to see it go no lower than that you got your first channel uh, third channel of support at 293 to 299 with a second one here at 306 and 312 and we got to break a double top resistance really a triple top resistance here at 324 to bring it up to about 344 is going to be my resistance on it so the 324 has to break triple top breakout and it looks like we have an ascending triangle with a, kind of like a like a glow horn look to it it, it has pulled back Found support level right there, like I said, at 293, but the low one's 285, and that's H E B T. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Boeing. 
Yeah, so I do want to mention Boeing, you know, um, they they do have obviously some delays as well with getting this uh, 737 MAX back in the sky. Um, I was just reading an article not too long ago uh, this past weekend about American Airlines and United. They've actually removed it completely from their schedules into December. And a lot of other airline companies are actually um, not going to have this aircraft on the schedule until at least January 2020. And, you know, that's just really because they just want to make sure that the FAA has to conduct their certification flights. Uh, they plan to do that in October, so that's going to be next month. And, um, you know, they want to make sure that the aircraft can return to service in the early fourth quarter. But again, these airlines are just not counting on that happening. Um, and so a lot of them are just taking it off the schedule till 2020. So we'll see what happens as they do this testing, supposedly in October. Um, so going to the Boeing chart, um, you know, we do see some strength in Boeing. We are seeing that the stock has started to um, be in an overbought territory. Um, you know, the thing with Boeing, anything can make it you know expand or contract so um right now i believe it looks like it's got a lot of strength in the stock uh it's been going up three days in a row and uh you know the weekly chart looks uh pretty good um but again you know anything can trigger this to to pull back but i have to say i was very pleased with the way this closed on uh friday uh, really because a lot of other things didn't close as strong, but this one was one of the ones that did. So, Jim, let's hear about Boeing since you're so Picasso on those numbers. Yep, Jimmy likes Boeing. We've had a double top up here from the major breakout we had up here at $446 for all the way from 292 to 47 And there's just nothing but beautiful green. And that was people made money. Now she's pulled back. The last time she pulled back, she had a top, double top here, so that was kind of gives a little bit of strength that maybe we can run up to that. So I'm gonna pull up the 20 day right now. 20 day chart down here at 316. We called this out in the room. She ran up, hit a high of about 370, pulled back, found support. So we've got a little channel right here that we're working on between the 35380 area to the 369 actually adjusted resistance at 367.39 and it seems to me like the last three days were real good on this so maybe it might pull back to the bottom of that channel if not it needs to break that resistance of 367.39 and the pivot point is going to be right in here right around the 360 area 359.72 so that's going to be your second support I'm going to draw a little red line on that because that's going to mean a lot to me when I go to look at it tomorrow it pulls back there and that number again was um, 359.94 almost 360 so anywhere in that area and actually it could be a little higher see this little hump right here it could be a little higher. It could be around that 360.58 area. So I'm going to draw a little line there and bring us up to a daily one minute. And we'll have that ain't going to work. I'm going to bring it to a five. There we go. Five day will work. So low support at 353.80 with a resistance to break at 367.39. And actually, it could be right here at 3. 6549 that's where it's going to be that's where we're going to call it resistance to break and the little pivot point area is going to be right here in the 35994 that's where we need it to hold if not it's going to pull back to that lower support that's BA and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Luna yeah so we've talked about Luna as well and uh, still talking about this one, because again, new 52 week highs, you know, they're the company that uh, they're into fiber optic sensing. They do fiber optic testing. Um, you know, this company is definitely a stock to watch. I mean, they are doing very well. Um, and this is, you know, they also, um, they did have very strong earnings. As you guys know, they did report earlier in the month. That very good revenues of 17.8 million, which, by the way, was up 
eighty percent. That is just amazing growth for this company. Um, so definitely keep this one on watch. It keeps coming up on my scanners. Uh, keeps coming up on my weekly uh, strong uh, stocks to watch. And uh, this Luna is definitely one um, that needs to be on your radar uh, because of the fact that uh, the chart is still really strong and it's got a nice pocket pivot as well. Uh, so that to me is a little bit of a footprint for the stock to still have some strength and making some higher highs. Jim, let's hear about Luna. Luna had a yearly low of 268 with a yearly high of 648. So yes, we've had a very nice run on this, almost $3.80. And right now, um, I'm just looking at it. We've had a nice trend from this little support level right at 393 all the way to 637. So that's gonna be my resistance. It's gonna be at 635 area. I can tell that I already have it jotted down. And we're gonna put a little low support right here, right around the 317. That's what needs to hold. We're going to look at the 20 day. 20 day chart. We have a 517 down here. So there we go. This 593 is what needs to hold on this one here on Luna. And I'm going to go ahead and jot this red line in here so I won't forget it. So we've got 593 as a low support. And that's kind of what I'm seeing. Maybe a right now we're at 637 with a pennant flag. You see what I mean by pennant flag right here? She come up, she ran up, and then she's kind of just went out like that. So it could go either way. The resistance we need to break is going to be this 647 area, right about there. Let's look at the 20 day chart one more time on the, or not the 20 day, but the one year. Yeah, that's right, about 647. Not bad. Put the 20 day support level 593, no lower than that. I don't want to see it go no lower than that. First support's going to be right around 617 area. That needs to hold with a resistance to break of 647, and we could move up to 7. And that's going to be L-U-N-A. The next one is U-T-I. One I'm going to keep yeah, my eye so on. This is a, yeah, U-T-I. You know, I didn't even know what that was. I never traded this at all. Um, it's called the Universal Technical Institute. You know, this is an actual school. It's a technician training school for skilled trades. And I got to tell you, they have so many locations. I mean, they have in Arizona, California, Florida, Texas, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, um florida has a huge like three locations in florida right all in orlando but let me tell you something about this company so this company uh head office obviously out, out in scottsdale arizona and um they are um you know they had phenomenal earnings i mean they had um their earnings were up 11.9 percent for the quarter and 13 percent year to date um, and they also mentioned that their guidance was raised. They're expecting operating cash flow of $12 million or more. And the expected adjusted free cash flow of 10 million or more. So they've had a lot of very strong revenue growth. Uh, this is for their fourth consecutive quarter of the year. And um, they are making a lot of consistent progress towards a profitable business and um, I have to say, I've never, ever personally seen an actual institution that's listed on the stock market. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. Um, so, you know, this is just fabulous. Um, so the reason they had great results, uh, they had obviously an increase in student registration. Um, the revenues from the campus uh, went to 79 million compared to 74.9. Um, their advertising off expenses was offset um, as well, and uh, this is just one to definitely watch. Uh, obviously, their guidance is raised, and I love when they when they say things like that. I am keeping this on radar. So definitely UTI, very cool website. I'm sure Jim's showing it to you. Um, you know, they do everything. They do automotive, they do diesel, they do collision, motorcycles, they do for the NASCAR Institute, the Marines. 
um, the welding, machinery. I mean, they just into everything. This is just amazing. Um, so this company is definitely one to keep on watch. It's closed around 574. Um, definitely new 52 week high. Had a nice expansion break. And again, earnings is done and super strong. And I love it. So I won't be surprised. You guys should keep this on watch because I think this stock has a lot more in it. I won't be surprised to see this go to six and sevens longer term over the coming sessions. Um, there's no reason for this to really pull back. I mean, they're just so strong and good. They got cash. So Jim, let's hear your thoughts on this UTI. Yeah, here's your yearly chart down here with a low of 186. My support wow. is right around the 239 area. And then we have a resistance up here at 574. So. <laughs> Uh, we're going to look at the well actually you can see right here we have like a pivot point area of 411 so that's going to be probably your your first pullback support if she decides to pull back a little bit would be down there in that low four areas between in this little channel of ascending triangle breakout between 4 411 and 449 if it fails to go down that far but it I mean, if it does want to go down that far, not fails. Um, 480 would be your other one. The other one that needs to hold right here is that 480 area, 480 to $5, uh, five bucks, 496. So let's pull up the 20 day. Look at the 20 day real fast. We did have a nice little breakout from the, the 450 area, the 449, which I mentioned earlier. And she's had a real nice week last week and hit a resistance of 574. So support level is going to be right here at 528. I don't want to see it go any lower than that. It can. It can drop down just as fast as it went up. I expect it to pull back a little bit. Always remember that first 15 minutes of the day is the most important to be either trading or not trading. Most like just to wait and let the that first 15 minutes dictate how they're going to trade the rest of the day. So let's look at this one year one more time. And that was a 52 week high at 574. And that's what we need to break. Let's just go ahead and call it six next. And the next the UTI, I'm kind of impelled by it too. Next one is going to be XPEL, E X P, I mean X P E L. Yeah, you're expelled. So uh, this company is not just a business, you know, they are very enthusiastic in the car business. They have been in business since 1997. And uh, if you take a look, um, this very cool website, obviously, and um, what they do is they provide protective films and coatings including automotive paint protection, surface protection. Um, they also do architectural window films and also a lot of like what they call ceramic coating. And what they do is they obviously have a lot of do-it-yourself kits, but they also train a lot of um, installers to, to learn how to do this so that, you know, people when they buy these uh, high-end vehicles, um, a lot of people want to, you know, what they call soup it up. And so, you know, you obviously have to go to a place that knows how to do that. And so they obviously provide that kind of training as well, specialized training. So this company, one to watch, they're actually in San Antonio, Texas. Um, they had great revenues that increased 4.5% to 30.1 million, which is, by the way, the highest revenue quarter in the history of the company. I love hearing that. Yeah. Um, Ryan Pape, who's the president of the company, kept saying that, you know, he continues to see strong revenue growth in the second quarter. Most of the regions are led by the U.S., which posted a growth of 55.5%. Now, he did say that part of the growth was offset by the declines in China, obviously due to the timing of China's sales acceleration, and they do expect to see a bit of an impact of also in the third quarter but it's already forecasted, but they said they're very energized by what they're seeing across all the other geographic markets and that they're very well positioned for growth for the balance of the year. Um, also, they did voluntarily agree to delist themselves from the Toronto uh, Stock Exchange. They're delisting from the TSXV, 
which is the venture exchange, but they're going to continue trading on the NASDAQ. So uh, those of you that are Canadian traders, uh, you could still trade the stock on the NASDAQ, so that's fine. Uh, you'll be able to trade under XPEL, obviously. Uh, previously traded on XPEL.U uh, on the Canadian exchange. So definitely one to watch again on this company. I love their earnings. I love the net income. And I really like the vision of this growth that they have planned. Uh, so definitely XPEL is one to watch and one you may like for even a swing trade. Um, I like setups like this. It's got 52 week highs. It's in the $10 zone now. Had a nice pocket pivot, nice earnings, parabolic rise. I mean, just a great recipe for a nice move. Jim, what do you think about this XPEL? Well, when she broke out, she broke out very healthily. She broke out with a good engulfing candle, as you see right here, and then with an ascending triangle for the next four or five days and then had another engulfing so we've had nice nice little candle breakouts here with a resistance high of 10 i'm going to call it right at yeah i'll call it with them so we're going to pull up the 20 day but that was yearly 419 low with a year high of 1081 and let's pull it up to a 20 day and see if we can get just a little bit better look at it I see another support level right there. So we've got low support where the sending triangle was right here. You can see it as you moved, scoots on across and tried to break resistance a couple of times and couldn't do it at that seven eight seventy nine. So that's what we're going to call is a low support, strong buy. Anything below that, um, I would probably be patient and wait for a confirmation for a reversal. The second support or the third one's going to be right here at 938, low support at 979, 879. And then you've got your, your second support right here at 995. If it goes below that, then we're going to go see these other two areas. If not, that needs to hold. And that's at 995, $10 range. And the resistance we need to break is going to be this 1081. Feel free to stop the charts. These, this video at any time and write these numbers down copy and paste it if you have to and the next one now was XPEL number five and the last one is one we've talked about quite frequently but it has a little bit to do with news and Miss Vegas is going to tell you what that news is apple. yeah so you know apple so we're, you know apple we talked about how it's going to affect with the China trade war tariffs and you know one of the things uh, you know so you got to keep a watch on this one potentially having a bit of a pullback and uh, but I do want to mention that Apple has confirmed the launch date for their next generation of iPhones, including a series of leaks about the specs of the new model. Jim can show you the article there. Uh, so apparently they're going to call it the iPhone 11. It's going to be launched on September the 10th. And uh, apparently they have sent out an invitation uh, to members of the media, which reported uh, a tagline called by innovation only. So apparently they're going to have this event at the Steve Jobs Theater at California headquarters in, of Apple at uh, 10 a.m. local time on September the 10th. And, um, you know, there is a lot of uh, leak in the Chinese media about the, spe the specs of this um, of three different models. Apparently they're going to have an iPhone 11 and they're going to have an iPhone 11 Pro and then they're going to have one called a an iPhone 11 Pro Max, which is going to be uh, the phone, I guess, well, the face of the phone is going to be bigger than the Pro. Um, and apparently it's going to have the Pro and the Pro Max apparently are going to have a triple camera system as they're looking to also um, take rival on the photographic capabilities of brands like Huawei and Oppo. Um, so they are apparently not expected to launch the 5G as as uh, expected and um there also uh there were some talks about apple getting into some sort of like walkie talkie feature which would allow users of iphone um to send messages to each other even when they don't even have a signal i mean that would be really cool yeah, um, but apparently 
yeah, that would have been cool. But apparently that plans, plans for that have currently been scrapped off. So I don't know why, but that's just what we're, we're hearing in the chatter out here in social media. So uh, that's, a, you know, stay tuned for some news and hype on this launch <clears throat> for the Apple iPhone 11. But also let's keep in mind that with the tariffs now that are officially in effect uh, for the next little while until they can come to sort of some sort of truce, uh, it is going to affect Apple. So, um, Jim, let's hear about your thoughts on the chart. And, and obviously there could be some pullback here. Um, and, and give us some thoughts surrounding, you know, what kind of levels we might see should it obviously it's going to pull back. Oh, yeah. Um, this is a wonderful one to play off of a Trump tweet because it does, you know, affect China. Apple does. They do have, you know, men on sales and stuff like that from China. A lot of people over there. And I love that idea of the walkie talkie. I mean, that <laughs> that was yeah. a selling point to me. I, I just I, unbelievable I never even thought about it but uh yeah that just kind of th threw me away right there so the low support that I would start to get concerned about or the pivot point area which the pivot point area is right here at 203.46 on 20 day let's first pull up the one year and show you exactly what kind of run this has had and it did have a pretty hard pullback which our crystal ball came out and said we we're going to have a good 2019 and we did kind of hit a triple top up here, kind of couldn't make up its mind where it wanted to do, small little head and shoulders in a way, but but she had pulled back pretty hard and almost hit that 200 EMA. So I'm definitely, you know, thinking that I like playing Apple when you can tell the momentum is in there and the volume is in there on the options. And we're going to be checking up number, let's see here, we want to go to day... 20 day, one hour, got a low support at 201.34 with maybe around probably another low for third support at 203.38. That second one right here at 204.68 with that first one at 206.78. With the resistance to break is going to be that 210.55 to bring it back to a triple top at 214.39 to break a resistance back to 216. But this is one that you can tell it goes into a trend. It, it doesn't stop. And the chart I'm using right now is called the TTM Trend Squeeze with the three moving averages that I'm using right now. And that's the 200, the 34, and the 9 EMA. So let's try to break the triple top of 214. If not, she's going to, right now we're in a pivot point in the channel. She needs to pull back to 201.34 to hold. This is a 20-day chart. I like, love using them. And that's going to be Apple, and that's it. Please subscribe and ring that bell. Also, we do have a place here on the website. I'll pull it up real fast where we have the Twitter link. Follow. We have up to right here just a couple days ago, we were at 503. Now we're at 540 followers on Twitter. Also, you can hit us here and... and Follow us on Stock Twits. We have both links, both Vegas and Nice links that we have on Stock Twits, which we really appreciate. Pinner Guys, Facebook, YouTube, and then if you want to email us. But that is I Love Stocks, Miss Vegas. Yeah, I just want to say that, um, you know what, um, there's going to be a lot of good opportunities for trading. Uh, we're now in September. A lot of people are just um, happy that the summer is over. And we're going to see a lot of the fat cats coming back to work. And so, you know, a lot of them are going to be coming back and we're going to hopefully see some good money coming in. Um, you know what? Good you're point. welcome to come in. You know, you guys are welcome to come in to our room. Uh, we offer a trial for one week for free. So there is no uh, risk involved. I mean, you can come check it out and see if you like what we do. We do a lot of live chat with ourselves and other traders. We also do the video updates. We provide daily chart ideas, stock ideas, option ideas. We do a lot of live, um, live um, audio and uh, we have the trade idea scanner. We also have the option scanner, which is, um, you know, have a couple different ones from Cheddar, Flow, and uh, with Algo. 
So we have a lot of like really good tips, tools that we use that help the traders and um, really help us, you know, get some great opportunities to make some good money. Um, so definitely come by, feel free um, and check us out for the week. Uh, you know, it's Labor Day, it's September, people are coming back to trading. So feel free to come by. We'd love to meet you, love to have what, you know, love to get to help you. And so, you know, no risk involved. Like I said, it's a free trial. So come on in and check us out on the website. Jim can show you on the website. Just go to the chat service option at the top and then go to set up instructions. And you have a step by step instructions uh, with pictures that show you exactly how to join the chat service. Again, it is free for the week and it's free all the time for the first week. And then it helps you determine if you like us and want to stay. So thank you again for following, listening, subscribing. Jim will be around this afternoon to do a live tutorial on charts, pivots, supports, and resistance. So if you're going to be around, um, please listen to him live. He'll be able to answer your question. If not, please hit the subscribe and follow button so that you can listen to him later on because um, the uh, live session will be recorded. So have an amazing day, everyone, and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. That's the aftermarket report, Vegas and Jim. September the 2nd, 2019, Sunday's edition of I Love Stocks. We love stocks. Thank you.